Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one to the one God. Amen. We have come to the sixth Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost. And we just listened to the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, where Jesus feeds 4,000 people with few loaves of bread. Last week, we listened to an incident according to the Gospel narrator where he feeds 5,000 men plus women and children. And some of the biblical commentators are of the opinion this could be the same incident narrated differently by different gospel narrators. I don't want to delve into the micro details of the exegesis. But there is, there are a few differences specifically we see in these two narratives. In the narrative we listened last week, we see the disciples coming to Jesus. And I shared last week saying that the disciples in a way were trying to get rid of that crowd. They came to Jesus saying, why don't you send them away? So they can go somewhere else and eat something. And that is when Jesus said, you feed them. But then we know what happened and then they had few, they said, a boy here has got five loaves that was brought and all this. This narrative today, what we heard today, it is not the disciples or anybody asking Jesus about what to do with the crowd. St. Matthew says, he called the disciples and said, I have compassion on them. So it is an act from himself. And also, if at all those people who were listening to him have brought some food with them, it might have been over. Because specifically, here Jesus says, they have been with me for three days. It doesn't say whether they haven't eaten anything for three days, or is it just that they finished whatever they had? But here, the initiation for the whole thing comes from, the initiative comes from Jesus himself. Out of his compassion, he is calling his disciples and saying that we cannot send them away because they will fail on the way. And as you usual, sometimes I feel that the disciples are Malayalis. As soon as they hear a proposal, they always come about why we shouldn't do it, or how we couldn't do it. It's always a sort of naysayers. Whether it is when Jesus is talking about the suffering, Peter immediately says, oh, don't do it. And now, even last week, they were trying to get rid of them. And today, even when Jesus is saying that, that was, where are we going to get this? Where are we going to get all this food? And last, year, last week's narrative, it was more elaborate, we need so much money, and, where, and I was reading, it is not even the fact of money. Just imagine, even in a big city, like New York or Philadelphia or wherever we are, to feed 4,000 men plus, it will be practically impossible if you want to feed 5,000 people here or 4,000 people plus women and children, let us say 7,500 or something. And all of a sudden, even if you want to order pizza, it would be impossible. I don't think the entire Staten Islands Pizza supply will be sufficient to feed all those people. 
But here Jesus is asking his 12 disciples who, who is struggling or wondering what are they going to eat to feed these thousands of people. And then Jesus asked when they were trying to avoid the responsibility of where are we going to, their counter questioning, where are we going to get all this? See, this is the next question is always a question Jesus asks. Or in our own life, this is something we always have to remember. When we feel that we are at the end of our resources, whether it would be for a charity purpose, where it should be for the church or diocese or whatever it is. When we are asked for something, we always say, where am I going to get this? But Jesus is asking, he is not asking them to bring food for all 4,000 people. He didn't ask them, you have to feed them, I don't want to know anything about it. But the question he is asking, how many loaves do you have? It's not even a question, how many lo loaves can you spare? That's how we think. When somebody asks for us for something, we always think in, that in terms of how much we have to keep for ourselves and then how much we can spare. Now here Jesus' question is not how much you can spare. If they have only four loaves, seven loaves or 60, uh, 12 plus Jesus, it isn't too much bread. And it is not a part of a five course meal, bread, and then it comes with soup or any of those kind of things. It is just bread and some fish. So basically they don't have enough for themselves in that sense. But Jesus is demanding, bring them, whatever you have, and then, and interestingly, he is not even asking, usually the prayer is not even about to multiply, there is no particular formula that Jesus says of the bread so that it could multiply. The narrator says, Whatever was offered, he gave thanks and broke the bread and distributed. That is where the miracle happens. Whatever they had, when the disciples were demanded to bring the whole stock of their food, and that was offered with thanks, not with grumbling. It is not with a grumbling heart they offer. So Jesus was giving thanks to those seven loaves and then that was it was abundance. So that is the basic formula I would say for the multiplication of whatever you have. You offer whatever we have in whole, not holding back. Because when you hold your hands tight, of course, we will be able to keep what we have with a closed fist, what else happens? You won't receive anything. Because unless and until we are able to offer our palms, or in a different way, our checkbooks or wallets or whatever it is, Unless and until we are able to offer our whole self and all possessions and everything we have and bring it before God, then only God will be able to bless us abundantly. And the result was they started with nothing or basically have few loaves of bread. Now at the end of the whole meal, after they have, after this 4,000 men plus women and children, 
ate to their full and the balance were 12 baskets. Now seven baskets. It was last week, it was 12 baskets. So seven baskets full. So it's a very interesting return on investment. For seven loaves, they are getting back seven baskets full. And now we will say, okay, if that is an assured return, we will own it. Unless and until that assurance is given, we are not going to own it. But unless and until we are able to trust God to the fullest extent, we will not be able to see miracles in our lives. Last week I was reading a book by C.S. Lewis, one sentence caught my attention where he says, we all in a good mood start our day offering that, oh God, I offer this day to you. I want you to fully in my heart and guide me. Then within few minutes we forget that and we take charge of our days. So remember, our prayers are always like this. We hold back. We want God to see, to do miracles in our lives, but we are not willing to offer our whole to God so that God can come into our lives and multiply abundantly. May God bless us all. Thank you.